It is now 5 o'clock. We will begin the workshop for the September 27, 2012, Mayor and Alderman. <coughs> Tonight, we do have two citizens that wish to speak. We will begin with Mr. Doug Schaefer. Thank you, Mayor and Alderman. Uh, what I want to talk about this evening is some information I think you all have already heard, but I think we need to put it out so all the citizenry can hear it. And it's the scores that uh, have come out in the last couple years at Laverne High School and how they compare with the other seven high schools in the county. This central is too new to be looking at. but. These are scores on the state comprehensive tests that we get. And I'm going to give first the three-year averages where Laverne came out out of the eight high schools in this county. In Algebra II, they were fifth out of eight. In English I, they were second out of eight. In English III, fourth out of eight. In U.S. History, fifth out of eight. And then that was a bad page except for one. But then in Algebra 1, they were third out of eight. Third out of eight in Biology 1, and third out of eight in, Al in English 2. In 11th grade, all students in the state of Tennessee take writing assessments, and proficient is considered to be a four out of five. And Laverne High School in the past three years has averaged 4.23, never being below 4.18 in any year. And a couple other things, we can't yet, they don't have the grades yet for to compare Rutherford County schools with the rest of the state. But uh, the growth achievement for Laverne High School this past year was uh, really good, because they only tested on the new TVAS scores, you probably heard about them there what they're trying to get out to make it more, t to make it tougher in our high schools. Well, on Algebra 1, the growth for Laverne High School was 15.8%, which was first in the county. English 2, it was 9.6%, which was second in the county. And I had gotten with uh, Mr. Zago, who's the assistant superintendent over curriculum, and he had sent me a little note back, and I'd just like to read a paragraph to you. He says that if you, You've probably read in a paper or seen, if you haven't, Rutherford County Schools is one of the 21 exemplary school systems and the largest of the group to receive this prestigious oral. 21 systems out of 136 or more in this state received this exemplary certificate. And Rutherford is by far the largest of the school systems that w received it. And then he says, I say this to add concrete to my next statement. And that's any high school in Rutherford County delivers a superior education to their students, especially one like Laverne High ranking in the upper middle to the middle of the eight high schools in this county. And I'd like to go along further <laughs> and say I know I agree with him that if a student puts forth the effort and wants to get a good education anywhere in this county, they can do it. And I stand here because uh, I've had three kids. Well, some of them are getting ancient now. They're not <laughs> kids anymore. But anyhow, I've had three children that graduated from Laverne High School. And uh, if you would compare them to the world in worldly things, they would all be doing very good in uh, their chosen uh, profession. And also, the mayor's daughter, Janae, graduated in four years from Middle Tennessee. She had made honors at Laverne High School. So it can be done. But you gotta support the children and they have to decide it's time to work. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. James Wall. My name is uh, James Wall. I'm the Vice President of Local 1055 United Steel Workers. We represent the workers at the Bridgestone Firestone plant. We have approximately six acres located on the corner of JFK and Hazelwood Drive. 
That's where our union hall is located at, and we're looking at building an educational facility on that property. It is called the ICD. It's Industrial Career Development. So if a man retires, laid off, or wants to quit, he has the opportunity to come and get a cross-train to whatever field he wants to get into that we offer at the facility. But in uh, several meetings with the mayor and Kyle, we went through and looked at the sewer is roughly 300 foot from our property line. And what we're doing is asking the city if they can look in the budget and find it feasible to run that sewer to our property so that we could put the building and attach it to city sewer without the employees and the members at the steelworkers having to consume the, the total cost of the, of the project to run the sewer to our property. Uh, right now, the, the union hall itself sits on a, a, a plat. We've had it replatted. It is on a septic system. Uh, if it fails, it's been uh, put to us that if the system fails, we'll be required to put it on to a city sewer that is not available at this time to our property. So what we're asking is if the city could look into it and, and feasibly find it in the budget to run it to our property so when we get time and we get to the point to where we can put this building on, we'll be able to hook up to the city sewer. Thank you for your time. If you could look at the minutes, I've asked the union, they're looking through their back notes too, um, to look at the sewer stopping just like right in the middle of the subdivision um, where it's located. He's correct, it's probably close to 300 foot. And they were they. I'm just saying for people to look at their notes to okay. see if it was even offered to bring it on down to them. They're going through their own <clears throat> notes to see if that was way before their time, but they're looking to see that if possibly their board did not, you know, refused it. It may have been offered to them and they denied it at the time. So I'm just asking everybody to kind of look through their notes to see if it was offered to them and denied or if it was never even offered and then being there. So and that's just getting history work done. Okay. No Thank you. All right, let's get right into business here. Um, we do have, if it's okay, we do have some guests here with us tonight. And we're going to start with the Severn Trent discussion, which is number 13, if that's okay with everybody, because um, we're going to kick this out because Bill's here. We have several people here with the water and the sewer and stuff. They can, so we're going to... Turn this over to Ms. Jill. Thank you. Mayor Board, thanks for having us on the agenda. Um, I think you have in your packet our renewal letter, uh, request for a contract renewal, and it outlines the options. We kind of discussed this a few workshops a few months ago, and this is the, I guess, the uh, formal request to, con to renew our contract with options one, two, and three which were originally presented, and then we modified it based on the uh, request of uh, Bruce to remove cross-connection from the scope. And then we've got an alter alternate option for each one taking out the cross-connection. I'm here to answer any questions that y'all might have. Okay, let's freshen everybody's memory up. Bruce, Jill, y'all can help me here. Their contract is up in February, okay? Per our contract, we have to let them know some of our decisions 90 days prior to the contract. So we will need to make some sort of decision this month regarding the Severn Trent contract, okay? Um, we've all looked at these options. Um, they've been put forth to us on several different occasions. What this board needs to do tonight while Jill is here and while we have talked, we need to have some serious discussion um, on what options, if we have more information on an option that you're interested in, you want more information, we need to gather that information. But we need to come to some sort of, uh, at least narrow down if we can get it to two options. If we have to, we may have to have a special call meeting before this month is over. 
to, to, to decide this. So um, I'm, I'm going to open this up for discussion, and we need to have some serious dialogue going on here. I guess this is an Evan question. Can we renew the contract with this big of a change if we go with some of these options without bidding it? Yeah, I think I, I think it's permissible to allow something like, like this to be renewed since we have this would be a renewal of a current contract instead of a new uh, option. I think if we were going to expand the scope of it to do more than what we were doing originally, what they're doing now, like the cross connection program or something like that, then I think we would probably get into a different issue. But in terms of just them continuing to do what they're doing, renewing it, I don't see this necessarily being a problem. Or if it's something closely related, it should be okay. If, right. we're, if we're adding the billing in, which is a totally separate component of this, then we may really need to look at it, you know, putting out another RFP. That's right. I think, I think we definitely need to renew. So if we contract run the water treatment plant, I, I, I don't want to publicate it for nothing else, but y'all done a good job since y'all been there. I, my, my opinion is we definitely need to keep y'all all in the water treatment for this. Thank you. And I'm also going to, and this is just, I'm, I'm excluding option three as well because we've made some changes. We're working on our changes in our water billing. And I think that's going in a, a good direction there. We, we know what we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's me. I, I'm not into discussing option three unless someone else here is interested. So that's what we need to do is narrow down and then focus on the option that we all might be interested in. Well, I'm fine with leaving three out as long as water billing's improving. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it doesn't, mm -hmm. maybe have to come back to them and mm -hmm. at a later date and go to that. I believe all of my two is, is probably what I would be looking at. If I have any concern, it's the term. Um, we'll jump one, one year to five years and, and look at I. I kind of echo everyone that's up here. I think everything is improving. However, um, five years, uh, still five years. I mean, who knows where, where, where we're at in another year or two. Um, what something else may be more cost efficient in two, three years if we decide to take it over, have the ability at that point in time. So I'd like to hear you all talk about the term, where you come up with the five years. Is that just something you thought would be uh, uh, good for everyone? Well, clearly, um, we're trying to get away from the year to year so we can, you know, bring more stability to the project, to our, to our employees. The five year came into play because uh, when we um, upfront the capital to upgrade the chemical feed equipment, we're going to depreciate that over five years, and that's why we had the five year term. If, if you would prefer that to be a three year term, we can, we can change the depreciation schedule but the savings will be a little less per year because of the change in depreciation. So we're, we're willing to work with you on that, but clearly the five years gives the biggest bang in our mind, you know, as a win-win. I don't have a pro Do you have a problem with five years, Tom? Is that what you're saying? Sure. Yeah. Well, my problem is, I think in the past, and you, you spoke about this just in the last couple of years, that the city has contracted many things over multiple years, and we've gotten down the road and thought, well, maybe we could have done it a better way. And, and no disrespect to Seventh Frank, and, uh, like I've said several times, I appreciate the long term contracts. I think sometimes bind the city uh, longer than what they have been, and we can name a couple of them here if we, if we had. That's, that's my biggest concern is the longer. Well, what's it take to get out of this if two years down the road we want it out? Well, there, there would be the same termination clause that's in the cur current contract. I don't have that. Um, I, I, I can look at that and have you an answer on Tuesday. I think that might mm -hmm. help some of his in, decision. In fact, I may be able to look at it. That. Bruce, if you have it, I can. I don't have it with me. I have it in my office. I mean, we'll look it at might it. help Tom. I'd like, to, it's not I'd like to know the difference between the, <clears throat> the calls from the three year to a five year. What it would cost, what the city would say by going with the five year than the three year. Well, I can give you a good range. Um, I just did some quick and dirty numbers. Uh, but the three year for option two 
would be about 230,000 a year savings as opposed to 251. Yeah, so not that much. Yeah. And, and let's all think about this too. Um, Greg is getting his men trained. And Greg also has admitted right now we're not ready for the, the treatment. But what I would like to see, and this is just my thoughts right now, we've had great conversation. You and your guys with the water and the sewer are, are proposing doing some tweaking over there. You're wanting to build some teams over there. You're getting them educated. You're, you've got a lot more training you're wanting to get done. Um, you've got a lot of projects coming up in the next, just our five-year capital plan that we're, we know we have to do. Mm -hmm. Now, they're, they're coming. Y'all are going to be stuck. At, we're going to be doing them. So what we might want to consider is if we go to the three-year, that gives him plenty of time to get your crew like you want it, get your training that you want, and also what I would like to see is you working with them and maybe doing some training, making sure they know about the the cross connections. Um, we'll be three years into our major projects, which we have them planned for five years. So you're going to be well on your way in our big projects. And you've got some big ones coming with the pumping stations and, and all of that. Um, would you be comfortable with three years giving you time to build your team up because you're talking about wanting to change some training options where you have a bigger team and you have more technical support? Uh, Y'all are wanting to change some of that in there and you're not, it's all not being dumped on you at once. I mean, what's your thoughts on that one? Um, I appreciate the concern and I'm with you guys. So where you're comfortable, I'm comfortable. Um, we talked today about cross connection and flushing potentially coming out of option one, mm -hmm. but option two has some price security in it for the city on chemicals and energy. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> right now we're geared up to do flushing and cross mm -hmm. connection. We have the licenses, we have the skills, we can employ a strategy, move uh, team responsibilities around without adding headcount at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, So we've been gearing up for some time to take this on. Uh, I'd like to see those things, those elements come back to the city. Mm -hmm. But as you well know, I'd like to see these guys here next year too. Mm -hmm. The learning curve for anybody else is those vertical lines, very steep. Okay. So to their credit, they've they've promised us some efficiencies. I'd be comfortable with a shorter term. In other, in other words, to see them prove that they can deliver on those efficiencies mm -hmm. before we sign them up to five years. And I think that's why, you know, in all the conversations we've had, I think the three year, um, that gets you well on your way into your big projects and get the people where you want them to be in your training and getting, I know you want to send a lot of classes and I really like the thought that y'all had on your water and sewer plan, how y'all were wanting to, to build your team there in a different direction. I love that. Um, so, and with the savings here, not only we're, we're trying to save every penny we can <coughs> so we get these projects done as well and it, get the, the big projects. We've got big ones, but we're not going to have a choice in doing Are we taking the flushing out of option two? Has that came out? No, that flushing is included. Y'all are still going to, okay. Yeah. Everything in option one is in option two. But I would love, like I said, I would love for these guys, I don't, I want them to be involved. When I say involved, I'm wanting them to know. I don't want it just, you know, we're doing this and they don't have a clue. And I, I think within that three years, I want them to be very active in knowing mm -hmm. which, which parts of our, our subdivisions are higher, which ones are at a lower range and working with them. That's what I would love to see, more training on your guys' part to bring them up to, to where they are absolutely 100% ready to walk in when we feel that we're ready to, to make that major step. And like I said, have we not, we, we just got so much we've got to do 
in these five years. And I don't want to dump too much there where I'll, I fully think they're fully capable of doing. Fully capable. I have no doubt in my mind. But with the savings here, they're, you're already going to be here. These are just like, again, these are my thoughts. So y'all jump in at any time and help give our guys a little more breather until we get this Waldron Road project done, get the water lines finished there, and then we got to start some of these others ASAP. I mean, y'all jump in here at any time. This is discussion. Jill, did, did you say that that is, you said the annual savings for option two for three years would be roughly $230? thousand dollars so right. we're talking basically over for a shorter term twenty one thousand um, dollars is there a way we can get exact figure by, mm -hmm. by tuesday on that? yes okay. um you know my rough figure is 233 468 <laughs> but i need to you know i need to pass that up the chain and make sure everybody's comfortable with that <coughs> um one thing also to consider is that this is if we do a three year we can also consider a three with two one year automatic renewals which makes it a total of five but you ha it, it's three but if if you're not ready in three if something comes up and, and you still want that annual savings that you enjoyed in the first three years you know you have the automatic <coughs> renewal option in there so you can do a three with two one year renewals if you want or just three years you know, we can structure that, um, the term, however you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. Y'all, y'all think about, think about that. And, and if I could yeah. also say, um, you know, option two really takes the risk. You know, we, we're already, you know, we guarantee compliance. And in option one, we, we put in procedures to try to reduce cost to come up to, to take on more workload. Option two really transfers risk from the city to us. So we're taking on the risk. So after three years, you know, you take that risk back. Mm -hmm. So you need to consider the risk side of this proposal as well. And there, there's, a, there's a value to that. Did you want to say something first? Okay, my next question. Do y'all feel that you're ready for Tuesday night? I think if we get the, the numbers, get some numbers. I was, yeah. well, we know we we I mean we've got to do it. We can get Evan's so information and then the, the exact yeah. figures used tonight. I I think I'm I'll be comfortable making a decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I can definitely get the figures for you probably tomorrow. And are we talking about just doing an amendment to the existing contract? So if, if you could have an example of what you want that to look like and get it to me tomorrow, that would be helpful in anticipation of Tuesday. I mean, I, I assume this is going to be a one paragraph amendment to the. Yeah, adopting whichever option mm -hmm. and then sign, yeah, yeah, in the term yeah. would probably change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any I, I think I've got both of y'all's cards, so if I have any questions over the weekend, I'll just Please do. Mm -hmm. Any Any questions from my water crews here, that are here? Our directors, any questions, Greg? Any input you'd like to throw in there? Or? Um, <clears throat> no. Okay, okay. I'm going gonna... to... Send them on if everybody's okay. All right. Thank y'all. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate your time. Okay. Let's see. I know we've got several different ones here. Um, let's just go on with the, um, let's just stay with water. Let's just go on up to number 10, and let's just get this page kicked out where we got our water and sewer and all of our guys here. We'll go to number 10, discussion, amend the water and sewer capital plan for water distribution equipment. Okay, so we're not asking for any more money. What we did is, <clears throat> uh, in drawing up the budget for the year, we asked for a backhoe and a service truck totaling 124 in the year. 
the we, we wrote amendments late last year to take on a mini excavator and this thing has been supremely efficient to what we thought it would be so what we're saying now is we don't need that backhoe but what we do sorely need is a skid steer with attachments a service truck and a used dump truck you can see that in the green you can see that the red total and the green total are the same okay <coughs> so we're simply asking for different equipment than we originally asked for four or five months ago so you asked for a backhoe a dump truck and a skid load we're going away from a backhoe and a service truck to a skid steer with attachments a service truck and a used dump truck so we're going from the red to the green same money just same money it. same exact money and that's been approved already I mean, so okay okay any questions i was just going to say we you know we had originally talked about doing a, a budget amendment for that mm -hmm. uh phyllis and i talked today and, and because we're really just moving the money around within that same fund we're talking about the same dollar amounts mm -hmm probably does not need to have a formal <coughs> ordinance approved uh, to swap this money around. So we just wanted to bring this to you so you would be okay and, and know what, what we're hoping to do. Amendments by department. If the department goes over, we kind of look at that at year end, but this is not making, this is not increasing <coughs> any line item. Well, it's not increasing the department in total. So we basically don't have to do the amendment. At this time. I said, so we don't have to do any action. Mm -hmm. Y'all have any questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, let's just go on to number 11. Discussion, renewal of Corps of Engineers easement DACW 62-2-92-0037. Mm -hmm. Located along Hollandale Road near the Bill, Bill Stewart intersection. Mr. Kyle. Mayor and Board, this is an easement it's one of those that's with a core that we've done, I think, a couple of times since this, with this board. It's across from the Cedar Lake subdivision. It's basically for the drainage from that subdivision to, to be able to go across core property. And it's just a ditch line that's, that's on their property that, that we have an easement to, to cross and maintain. So that's what it is. I think in your package you should maybe have a copy of the plaid, probably the easement language, and then I think some probably aerial photos that, that shows you the location of it. And at this point, it really doesn't take any council action. Uh, we, we will need to get the, the actual easement from the core. And then when we get that from them, we will bring that back for approval in front of this board. And this is the way we've done it for the last two or three that we've had. Any questions? All right, number 12. Motion to pr approve a proposal from CTI Engineers Inc. for sewer pretreatment streamlining regulations. Okay. Jerry, uh, Greg, <laughs> he starts pointing to you real quick. <laughs> the uh, federal EPA uh, put regulations on the state's TDEC for us to change uh, language in our serious ordinance. It's of almost no impact in terms of cost or operational uh, tasking or ongoings. It's just they want to see a certain language in our serious ordinance. So we've uh, taken on a uh, RFP from CTI, and um, we need you know, their help to author the new ordinance. <clears throat> so the letter that you've got in front of you is a, an RFP not to exceed $5,000 uh, to do that authoring work. Uh, this uh, was due as of October 1st. I've sent emails to TDEC and Metro Water S Services, and they know that you know we're behind on this. Uh, their initial request on this was more than two years ago. I was going to say, let's be clear that that mm -hmm. it was brought up in June or July of 2010. Right. And I became aware of it uh, about two weeks ago. We found, yes, so, the letter was sent. So what we're doing with this now is we're going to try to hammer this out quicker rather than slower to try to hit that deadline, although they understand we won't. So <clears throat> it may take an additional 30 to 60 days to get this done. So I've put out a thorough communication to those guys copying uh, Bruce on that. They've not sent me anything back, and it's been a week and a half. So they'll get to a response on their timing, as they do. But at this point, I think they're happy enough that they haven't responded that we're attacking this with a plan. That's all it is.
Questions, comments? I'm not comfortable with it because of the last one dealing with it and that goes to number 15 that I put on for discussion here in a minute. You know. There, there are some big differences obviously between this and, and the last study that we had CTI complete. Uh, I just, I'm not. And, and, and with, with their familiarity with, with our system, uh, they could probably punch it out a whole lot quicker than any other engineering firm could and, and I think, you know, that's our main reason for wanting to get this done as soon as we can because of that October 1 deadline that we just found out about about two weeks ago. So uh, that, that's our main purpose for trying to get CTI to get this completed. I believe later on we're, we're going to speak to another engineering firm. Um, maybe we could get their, their thoughts on this they're able to do this or not. All righty. Well, I tell you what, we may come back to this one. <laughs> yeah. All right. well, we jump to that right now. Uh, let's do, <coughs> yeah. Let's just go on to number 15. And then we'll come back. What? Discussion consulting engineering services <clears throat> for sewer department projects. That one's mine. It's it just makes more sense to me that whoever's doing the water ought to know where the water's going in the end result. And we've used Griggs and Maloney, and they're huge on sewer systems also. And I've just not been really impressed with CTI over the water study and everything else. If we change, do we have to rebid that? I've talked with Evan and Bruce both, and as long as it's not an ongoing project, there's not contract plus it's a it's considered a professional well, that's service what i thought but i want to make sure right. so it wouldn't be wouldn't be professional bad. services we don't have to put out for our bid or rfp or anything we, we can just pick who we want to yeah uh, the the concern would be the existing contracts we have with them they would basically probably need to just run their course and be completed and then you know the new firm would have everything you know from there on what are the guys comfortable with? I mean, they're the ones that's going to be, I would say, Jerry, <coughs> your sewer. I, I don't mean to put people in no, spots, no, but, but y'all need, need to put All I can speak to this on is in the year I've been here, mm -hmm. in the projects I have worked on with CTI and Neil Hall has been nothing but professional, to the point, and they've helped me learn the curve real quickly. So my concern of bringing another firm in, <clears throat> like kind of like earlier, it's gonna be with Severn Trent. If we just drop Severn Trent, it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the learning curve for another engineering firm would be steep. Mm -hmm. They've been with us 12 years, they know the system. <laughs> uh, I think if we just, my opinion, if we keep them, watchful eye on it, make sure. Uh, the only thing I can speak to is they've been fair to me. My Kyle, he's our city engineer. I've dealt with him since, I guess, um, I've been here since 05. I, I don't think I dealt with him in the very beginning, so probably about 06 or 07 is probably fair to say. I've not had any issues with CTI as far as projects and things like that. I know this, this recent uh, issue was um, an issue, but um, other than that one, that's, that's the only one that I can speak of that, that I've ever had an issue with, with, with what they've done or what they've provided for the city. And, and you stop me if I'm stepping out of bounds. I'll give me the head shake. Go right ahead, man. Um, I think our biggest issue was not CTI as a whole. I think it was... Mr. Fox, that people are having some difficulty with. Um, I, I mean, I'm just gonna be quite frank. Um, uh, there was some major, uh, I think, personalities. I think there's been some personality in the past, long before Jerry or, or Greg or even you guys were up here. I think there were some issues with his personality then. Um, unfortunately, uh, we, we had a loss in that firm. I think Joe, 
I'm thinking Joe and Neil kind of handled it most when Joe was alive. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but I do think there's some, some issues with the... Well, I've just heard some stories over the years of things mm -hmm. that it, mm -hmm. I'm not going to bring them up, but I'm just not happy with. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly this board's choice. They weren't. To, but I think we do. Weren't, um, so to speak, the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, Mr. Neal. Good evening. I'm Neil Hall with CTI Engineers. I didn't really come with a defense prepared. Uh, in fact, this is a bit of a surprise in, in its development over the last few weeks, I think. Uh, you know, we have enjoyed a good relationship with the city of Laverne for 12 or 13 years. And during the course of that 12 or 13 years, we have provided you with, in our opinion, highly professional engineering services at a very reasonable cost. We would like to continue to provide engineering services to the city of Laverne. But we do not want to be where we're not wanted. If you all are not comfortable with our firm, if you're not comfortable with our services, if you are not comfortable with our billing, please don't use us. We simply do not want to be where we are not wanted. I would hate to think that we would continue our relationship under a cloud. If a cloud is to remain, then get rid of us. We have two ongoing contracts at the current time. We have the interstate pump station, which has been bid. Documents have been sent to w &O Construction for their execution. Contract is at an excellent point for termination if you choose to use another engineer to continue that project. We are involved in the East Hurricane Creek drainage basin rehab. The flow monitoring has been done. The SSES work is underway, uh, being done by your forces. Again, an excellent opportunity if you choose to terminate that contract, to terminate that contract. Now, is that what I want? Absolutely not. I want to continue to provide engineering services to the city of Laverne. And in the past, it was Joe Bishop in my office who provided the bulk of the contact work that was done here. Um, about five years ago, Joe began to involve Dudney Fox in your sewer system. And Dudney probably has more knowledge of your sewer system than anyone else. He knows more about your relationship with Metro Nashville through Metro Water Services. He knows more about your sewer system than I do because he was more involved in it than I have been. Over the last year, I have worked more towards assuming project management of the projects in Laverne. We are prepared to move forward with me as project manager on any projects you might choose to use us for. And if you have any questions of me about CTI, uh, the work that we've done with Laverne, I'll be happy to address what I can. If it's an answer I don't have on the tip of my tongue tonight, I'll be happy to gather the information and give you a reply when I can do it with some precision. Any questions? I don't have any. Thank you. <clears throat> well, yeah, I don't know how I feel. Well, here's the thing. It's on a discussion. Do you want it to be brought for a vote? I mean, I'm, I'm curious if it would save money if we just had one engineering firm, you know? I just, I, we get more interaction with the other one. There's usually somebody here for workshops, meetings. I don't feel like they've tried to take advantage of us since I've been here. I felt like we got took advantage of on one incident, incident with Greg. I just, I'm not comfortable with CTI. That's just my personal opinion. 
Anyone else? Don't go. I still say if we have we need to let the guys that have to work with them know what what's best for them. I mean, we're not I mean that's my thinking. Based on their uh, experience and service to the city, I think it's in the city's best interest to keep them on board. If we have issues with personalities, it, it can be an effort uh, within the team here to make sure that that's not in our face, okay? So I, I would hate to see them go. They have uh, created a momentum. They're, they're the drivers of the capital plan that we'll talk about later. Um, I would hate to see them go. I just want to say, from bidding, from bidding side, I have had never had a problem with any of our engineering services. Never. I mean, they've always been professional. Work with me. You know, we've worked together to get everything ready for board meetings. They've given me what I've needed that day or the next day, and that's pretty quick when you've got to be open. So, from for my two cents, I think it's good that we don't have it all raised in one basket. And, and I'll be honest. I don't want that. We're at that. We got to get that sewer pump station. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a be a poop, poop creek without a paddle. <laughs> I just <laughs> on that one. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I'll go with what y'all like, want. I just mm -hmm. <coughs> that's my personal. Maybe I'll back to the station. Uh, maybe CI can can meet with each one of us between now and the meeting. I mean, I'm I'm comfortable with CDI, but maybe Vice Mayor might meet with them and kind of get clear the air. Or like I, mean, I, out where I can, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to keep y'all from doing whatever. I mean, I just wanted to voice my opinion tonight, mm -hmm. and the way I felt about it. And, you know, maybe this will make it a better working relationship since they know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And Neil, you said that you're you're pretty you're stepping up and going to take over a lot of our projects. Thanks for letting me come back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the 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 answer to that is yes. Our plan in working with the city of Laverne is for me to be the face that the city of Laverne sees. I think Mr. Farmer mentioned about attending workshops and attending board meetings, and I'd like to I'd like to pursue that just a little bit if I could. <clears throat> CTI has made a practice of not appearing at workshops and board meetings except when we have an item on the agenda. It's simply the way we normally do business. Mm -hmm. If any of our clients would like us to be at either workshops or the board meetings we will do that there is no charge for us to be in attendance if you want us here you'll see my smiling face twice a month at least and mr walden's question about my willingness to sit down and talk <coughs> with each member individually be more than happy to do it at any time uh, I'm available from now until your board meeting uh, I will make myself available to fit your schedules if anybody wants to sit down and talk with me, I'll be more than happy to do it. Maybe the afternoon, right before uh, the it meeting. Might, it'd have to be right before. If That's I what I'm saying. Be, maybe right before the meeting. I don't even want to commit to it. I can let you know Tuesday, because I don't know what's going on Tuesday. What time should I be here on Tuesday? It has to the meetings at six. Six thirty. We have public hearing. Have public hearing at six thirty, and then citizens forum at six forty-five. I could probably be here around five forty-five. I'll be happy to be here at 5.45 Monday, or Tuesday, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, is there, did you want to sit down with him? I, I'm fine um, with him. Did you, would you like that? No, no. Uh, Jerry? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. So, would you like this to stay on the agenda for Tuesday night? No, we can take, I mean, it was just discussion. I just. Okay. No, I, I want everybody to be comfortable when they're worried thoughts. about something. Mm -hmm. It's each of your, your rights, and it is your job to, to bring forth what you're concerned about. Because there might be something that some of us didn't see that you saw or some of us saw that you didn't see. Or no, I'm comfortable with it right now. I, I mean, we... It, just, it was discussion. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to mm -hmm. but that's, out there. That's why there's five of us up here. We all have 
you know, Mr. Farmer and I spent some time together. We might surprise each other with how much we agree. <laughs> I, I think if we did have a, um, an action item, it would basically be to put out an RFP uh, to look for a new consulting engineering firm. So that's really what the action item would be uh, if it stays on the agenda for Tuesday night or if it comes up again in the future. So. Um, but it's, it's up to this board if you want to leave it on the agenda or not. I think several things that were mentioned were probably, I, I agree with Sherry in the sense that yeah. it's, it's not us that works with us. It's, it's, it's uh, all the guys there and, and, and they're comfortable there. However, I mean, we have made a, a habit in two years to really look at things and if there are better ways. So maybe we continue to, to look at that. We, we recently found out there's a, someone we've worked with that also uh, there may be another way is all I'm saying so mm -hmm. I, I'm, going, I'm good either way if you want to if you want to bring it up that's me you just give us the word I mean if we put it out for an RFP or we just don't say what it costs I mean well I mean if we do and it saves us money I mean I'm not saying in the projects we've got started but mm -hmm. For future projects, we're trying to save money everywhere else. You know, why not? Because these are where we're spending the most money. Water, sewer, mm -hmm. those are our capital projects. We're trying to figure out how we're going to pay for them. Mm -hmm. If it's saving us money there, every dollar is going to help. So, I mean, if we did an RFP just to save, because mm -hmm. like Tom said, I mean, we just found out about another company. But if I may ask, can I please have my sewer pump station with me? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not saying end anything now, but I mean, for future projects, I mean, could could we save, you know, maybe it's not any savings, maybe it costs more. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I mean, we should at least check. I, I know speaking from, from past experience, we there was a time here when, when one company did have both water and sewer. Uh, I think it was more the company itself. Uh, they were quite expensive. And at that point, we felt we were being gouged because they had both water and sewer. And that's when we basically split it up into two different firms handling, mm -hmm. you know, one water and one sewer. So, you know, obviously there's no way to know if we were to give one firm both or or however it might be. There's no way to know exactly what would happen with the billing, but, but that is why it got split up mm -hmm. to begin with. I say, I'm just kind of wanting to explore the options of will it save us money in the long run? Do they have do we, do different we have, ideas? I mean... Do we have to take an action to look into I don't know that it takes an action item to put out an RFP. I think we can do that administratively if, if the council would like us to look into that further. I, I, you know, that's basically just putting the RFP together and advertising it and, and seeing what comes back. I mean, it's minimal cost really to the city. And it's not a formal bid process. Right, exactly. Not. Is there a problem with having one? And we don't have to act either way. Sewer? Right. I mean, you, you don't, don't, have you don't even know if that you don't want, if you don't like it. I mean, there may be somebody else out there that's just as familiar I mean, with a system like ours. I mean, I don't, I'm not a sewer person. I ain't a water person. I just. Well, I haven't had a problem with our water engineer at all. Oh, no, no, this is sewer. This is sewer, not our water. Oh, he said water. I said I don't, I don't know anything about He's water or sewer. Oh, okay. or sewer. I don't know. Oh, no. I mean, this had, no, this is strictly sewer. This has nothing to do with nothing water. nothing I know anything about. I'm just looking at, is it going to be more cost effective for one to do it that knows for the bringing the water in and shipping the water out? I mean, because we're trying to save money to do these capital projects. Is it going to, you know, long run, is it going to save us a lot of money? Okay, we don't have to have an action. If you feel more comfortable, if he can do the, the RFPs to give y'all some kind of idea what you're looking at. How's that? That'll work. But in the meantime, we're going to, can we continue on with the pump station? 
you know, the existing <laughs> contracts would, would yes. be just to and, that, and, that, yeah, and that's what I'm looking for, future contracts. Yeah. Okay, that's, not, that, not yes. what we've got started already. Okay. From that point on, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to swap horses midstream of mm -mm. doing one thing. I don't want Jerry to have a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't they like to see it continue on there? Who drew it up? Yeah. But, yeah. And it wouldn't stop it from happening. Okay, do we have any more comments on this one? Any more questions? Whatsoever. Okay, so we've all so we know what's gonna happen there. And that won't be for a vote, but they'll do the last piece. That's fine. I'll give you something to do. And we all Okay. Number fourteen. Discussion, water and sewer fund capital plan. Okay. I scribbled all over my car. Okay, so you'll recall um, when we met last time, we had the front part of this list already done because it was talking about uh, capital re uh, repairing projects at the plant, mm -hmm. but in some cases it required amendments, but not more money than was already in the water budget, just mm -hmm. a changing of some projects. So page, the first page here, you'll see a few projects. If you go over to the next, you'll see the total you saw last time at 584. This is all at the plant. Mm -hmm. So I call that budgeted water plant projects, okay? If you'll skip over to page four, page three incidentally was just blank, so I pulled it out. If you'll skip over to page four, this is what I call borrow for water distribution projects. If you'll recall now on the front page, the 584 is all we have in the fund for the year, okay? So these projects here on pages four and five, if you go on over to five, you'll see they total 15,306,000, but the three projects in red are not currently in the five-year plan. So I took those out, and that leaves a need. If we're going to borrow money, my view, we borrow $7.1 million to take care of distribution problems now, okay? If you continue on in the packet, package, it goes over to sewer. On page 6, you'll see 989500 totaled. Those are budgeted projects in 2012. They're already approved. We're executing some of those with CTI. The rest are planned to execute this year, okay? You go over to page seven, and I call that borrow for collection system, okay? These are the projects that are remaining in the five-year plan, totaling 3.7, okay? So if you add the 7.1 before and not it for water and distribution, and now you add the 3.7, you come up with about $11 million worth of projects in the five-year plan for both water, sewer, and the plant, okay? So in my view, this is, this, I think this is what you asked me for, so yes, just to prioritize this. <coughs> Okay, and these are set up in a priority list, okay? So if we could only do 25 of these projects, we wouldn't do 26 through 37, mm -hmm. based on what we want to borrow at the end of the day, if we're going to borrow. Um, now we can talk about every single one of these projects in detail, <coughs> although we've done that mm -hmm. several times since the retreat, okay? So I think I've delivered on what you asked for. You wanted a list of not just the water, but you wanted to add distribution to sewer too, and that's now here. In my view, those projects in red are a huge number, like 8.1 million. Mm -hmm. You pull that out and we do those later on down the road. Again, 7.2 for water and distribution, 3.7 for sewage collection. The total is just under 11. And those projects are all in the current five-year plan. And the number we were looking at yesterday was 12.5-ish, something like that. Now, let's understand page <coughs> one, Two. Those are 2012 budgeted projects. Right. They're not in the bar mm -hmm. at all. Number two on four, page four. Number four. And which other one? I forgot five. Are also in the 2012 budget. Yes, ma'am. So, I, didn't, I, 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 I didn't pull those out, but I apologize. But that's, that's, okay. 100, that's 135. Yeah. I just want to make sure they knew. Now, we're voting on that Tuesday night. We're voting there, on that. There is a first reading of a budget amendment. Amendment, okay. Uh, 
okay. to account for some of these, yes. I just want to make sure y'all understood that. Those are already, we have the money to do those. Okay. So I don't want us to get confused. We're, we're, we've got to move on right now with what we can with the money that we have. Right. So we've got to do those. Your two inch lines are in the borrow too. They're not in the beyond the five year plan. Mm -hmm. So, and there's been a lot of discussion about that. AMR meters are also in the initial borrow. If any project ever made sense to borrow for it's that one because of the savings on the reading side and the revenue generation on the making accurate meters uh, happen essentially overnight. Uh, some communities are doing this a few meters a year in house. We want the instant savings and the instant revenue. Has the ability to fund at least that two and a half million of the project certainly over a 20-year term, okay? So, um, again, if there's projects in here that you don't recognize or want to talk about in, in greater depth, I'm free to do that. Well, I think, too, with these, I just want to make sure that we understand what will be on this Tuesday night. But I know we're also going to be meeting again with this because we have to give this to the Stevens group. And there will probably be another good workshop in the afternoon, you know, one afternoon, it would probably be November, sometime in November. And if we're not too, we, it's going to be pretty hectic it, on the It would need to be October, one. actually. Yeah. So we'll be having another workshop, but don't lose this because we asked them. This is, this is projects and they're, <coughs> they're prioritized and what we have to do and when we have to do. Them. I can put this in your email tomorrow. Okay. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. And then this is going to go to the Steve. This is mainly what we needed for them to look at as well. And then also what we've asked them to do, figure where we're not going up so much each year. If we borrow, what's the least amount we can hopefully not go up 6 and 9% and us still be okay. And no, Garland, you cannot have a million dollars. <laughs> 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 Those just add up to 11. That's right. About 12 and a half. I don't know how General Fund can get into this one. <laughs> so, so, so Tuesday night, only thing we're voting on is the $989,000. No. We're voting on page one, page two, which is the, the total of page one. Mm -hmm. Number two on page four. Mm -hmm. Number four on page four. And five on page four. This is not borrowed money. This is money put back for these projects. And we will be paying for these in full. Yeah, that's perfect seeing all that mm -hmm. right there together and organized, I like that a lot. Okay, guys, is there anybody else here that, okay, I just wanna make sure I didn't have any. All right, let's go back to um, the prayer will be by me this time and the pledge, Vice Mayor, you'll have the pledge. Um, we have, we'll have our Employee of the Month and the Chief Award of Excellence. Goes right into old business. Motion to approve the paving of streets and Pinnacle Point Phase One. Mr. Brown. Mayor, is that private? We're still discussing last month. I don't know if Evan wants to probably comment. I know he's got more information than he, I think, had last time. We, I've, I've communicated more with the um, Butler's attorney, mm -hmm. and we're waiting on uh, Hoover to give us a final cost. And you may have that by now. I don't know. I, he said he sent it in the mail. He told me the cost <laughs> seventy one thousand five hundred forty six, but I want to actually get the invoice in hand before I say that that's a definite. So basically, what this is, um, this is just the the. We've already voted on the street itself. The streets are paved. Yes. And that's what this is, I want to make sure they understand. This is the little side drive. But if, once we get the invoice back, the bond was 74 even, I think. A little bit more. May have been a little bit more. But basically what we're saying is if once we get our invoice of what's been done, we will have money left from that bond 
Remember we'd asked Mr. Butler, we said that would be his responsibility. Well, if we have the money left to do this, we will, we will do that. We will finish putting what his bond money is that we collected to do this portion. Am I saying that correctly? You may have to ask Evan on that. The, the bond money we got was $74,077.50. So of course, what the invoice I just told you would, would be less if that's what it comes back at. Mm -hmm. But we still don't have enough to pay the private drive because it is $8,629. So, and I, I don't know that we're in a legal position to pay yeah. the private drive. That's why I, okay. what I'm trying to do is to, to get the butlers to agree to do that. Mm -hmm for us like they were going to originally. Mm -hmm. uh, but they did want to see in fairness what the ultimate cost was to do with the public roads. And so we now have that figure and I can communicate that with their lawyer and we'll see where we are at that point. Okay. So we, we won't know this. Until oh. I mean, really the ball, once, once the number goes to the butlers, the ball's in their court. Okay. There's not much for us to do other than wait for them to get back to us. Okay. And one thing I would like to add is since it has been paved out there, I, I have had at least one resident that, that is complaining that does live on that street that will probably be here Tuesday, Tuesday night to uh, speak at citizen comment to, to ask y'all to pave that street. She just feels like it was the developer's responsibility to do that and was just hoping the city would feel the same way because kind of putting it on the homeowners to foot the bill for that. So. I don't know what all she has to say. I just know she, she has complained about that. And two months ago, that's kind of what was said. It would be, that, that would be an issue with, with mm -hmm. that being paved. And then the, I think right. there's three homes maybe or four There's homes. four there. And, and I think if you was to ask all four, probably all four would have an issue. It's just one has called already mm -hmm. just to see if. And the reason why is I, I think she's seen the pavers out there today when they was paving and just to ask them, why are you not paving this portion? And they said, that's not what we've paid. You know, we're not told to do that, so we're not going to pave that. And then she called me and asked why, and we went back and forth this the private drive issue, and, and uh, she was just going, she wanted to know if she could address the board, and I told her she could come to citizen comment either tonight or Tuesday night, and I think she had a conflict with coming tonight. So Some, some of these folks, I would imagine, when they bought, and I'm, I'm speculating, but may not have realized that they were buying a house with a private drive as opposed to a public street when they bought the house. That, that is, yeah. Which I is a shame, but that, I mean. Yes. I don't think she did. I think she thought it was public until she started reviewing her own documents when she was trying to say that it was public, and then she seen that it was private. So she's not, I don't think, going to argue that it's private or public. I think she just mainly wants to let you, let you know her feelings on that. She feels like that was the developer's responsibility to finish that and that here they are left with the developer not finish it and they're left with what they you know are left with so they just want to see if the city would be able to do it the first time and, and then the homeowners association do it from then on and that way they would have enough time to build up the money to maintain that that's that's kind of what i think she's well it will be at regardless of who pays it pays it uh that that subdivision was association just like that that pond was the association. Right. We we'll have to maintain the the, uh, the entrance sign and the, and the pond and the private drive. Yeah, the homeowner association have to maintain all the common space that, you're, that you're talking about. Doing it the first time is two different things. Yeah, people. Mm -hmm. You got to have something to maintain. Mm -hmm. We've never done. <laughs> they don't have to maintain. <laughs> and, and that is the question, just because you know the, the yeah. developer did not finish the initial mm -hmm. improvements. And that what uh, that's what the letter of credit was in place for mm -hmm. was to finish those initial improvements. So that's that's the legal question <coughs> as yeah. to whether we're responsible for that or not. And it may be a moot point if we can get the butlers through what we're trying to do to get them to agree to do it because we not only have the private road but we've got a punch list about three pages long of stuff mm -hmm. that's got to be done. So all that stuff would then be wrapped up in whatever agreement we're trying to reach with with the butlers. And that's including the sidewalks as well, right? The punch list he's talking about was is, included is the sidewalks. Yes. Evan, is the private drive in the punch list? No, private, sir, but... Private drive is, it is in the punch list. The striping okay. zone. There, there's no question that the private drive is on the table in terms of what we're asking the developers to do. So to the extent there's citizens who may be upset because this private drive hasn't been paved and we're not in, in a position as a city yet to say, yeah, the city can spend city money on a private drive, but we are doing 
what we can to try to get the developers to live up to their end of the bargain, which is what we're doing right now. Are you going to put any timetable on that? Uh, or can you put any timetable? I mean, this could drag on really, and, and these residents could be uh, stuck in this situation for a while. Because I don't think it's the, the wise move for the city, even if we there are legally can do, do that, when it was his responsibility in the first place. I think we'd be setting a precedent looking forward. Uh, again, these developers need to finish the projects. And, and uh, that, so is there a time frame we can put on it of, of you know, one way or the other so sure you're I mean you're, you're free to put whatever time frame you want to put on it uh, you know in terms of what would be a reasonable one <clears throat> I guess what I'd ask you to let me do is since we I've, I've been waiting on the number from Hoover now that we've got it let me give their lawyer a call on Monday or tomorrow and tell them that folks are getting anxious and we want to get this wrapped up ASAP and and I don't think we need to come at them with a hard and fast deadline probably right now but I can take his temp I can take his temperature and find out. And if, and if we do need to put a deadline, then I guess my question I mean, originally, <laughs> sure. tell me if, if this is where we're still going. Wasn't there some it was going to be contingent? It was something that potentially would be done down the road, but they would agree to it now. Um, so I mean, it, maybe not finishing it right now, but the, the assurances that they would pay differences, even if the city could do. I mean, if we did the work now with the assurance that they were going to pay it, that's that's what we're trying to right, do. Right. Right. Okay. That's exactly right. Any more questions? Okay. Number five, second reading, ordinance 2012-23, an ordinance to amend the 2012-2013 fiscal year water and sewer fund budget and capital plan for the interstate pump station project. Public hearing will be held on October the 2nd, 2012 at 6.30 prior to the meeting. Any questions? Jerry, you got anything? Any questions for this second? Uh, as an increase of one, $165,000. Correct. The, uh, the increase in that time. The budget originally had 100000 uh, for the interstate pump station. Uh, we got the bids in. It was just under two hundred sixty-five. So we took the one sixty-five away from the Hurricane Creek pump station and added it to the interstate pump station to have enough for that project. And this is one of those projects that's budgeted that we talked about a few minutes ago. So, so basically it was robbing Peter to pay for all or something like that? Pretty much. Sure. We have to do that in our home budget too, don't we? <laughs> Numbers, I'm sorry, any more questions? Number six. Second reading, Ordinance 2012-24, an ordinance to amend the 2012-2013 fiscal year state street aid fund budget and capital plan for a street department, dump truck, and snow removal equipment. This a public hearing will be held on October the 2nd, 2012, again at 6.30 prior to the meeting. Any questions? Is, it, is this in the budget? This is the uh, equipment that was approved two, two months ago uh, to buy out of State Street Aid, which I don't believe it was in the budget, but this puts it in the budget uh, for the snow removal equipment. Just moving it around. This allocates the money. Any more questions? All right, we're going to go to the consent agenda items. A, approve recommendations for city bids and purchases. One, bid holiday lights. Okay, I would like to speak to that. Um, if you'll look, I will admit that we did not pick the cheapest holiday lights. We went with the four, the four foot design and they were a much better design. If anybody wants to see, I have the booklet here. It shows what they, what the one company bid and they just did not look to be the quality as the ones that was picked by the board. There was a panel that picked these and these just were not the quality as the, the company that, let me include everything and I'll show you. 
the quality just was not there. I mean, nothing. And these lights, we're wanting to leave up from November through at least January. We want to leave them up because they're snowflakes, all clear. Um, we would like to leave them up through, through January. All white lights, uh, and they're the different picked, shapes. Who picked them? It's Felicia. Felicia, all of them the same. Uh, me, Kathy. No, there's about five. Uh, there's about five <coughs> different I think designs here. Okay, okay. she yeah. said about what, four. What, what kind of thing is it? Yeah. Well, the ones we had last were pitiful. That's all I can say. I'd rather not have light. Well, that's what I said. Don't put them up last. They're gonna they'll gonna ship all the all the hardware, mounting hardware. 10% additional bulbs will be sent, and all the warranty will be free of. <laughs> I guess I'm not tall enough. <laughs> I'm loud enough. Uh, but the, it's. Where is the warranty? Didn't, didn't Dennis was asking a question. I didn't hear. I was getting ready to ask. Him. You were asking a question a couple minutes. I think you're trying to find it. Okay. There was warranties on both from both companies. I'm just trying to find exactly which warranty was which. I want to say that there was a 10-year warranty on both of them. But do we have money in the If budget? they were taken care of. Now, to this is normal wear and tear. Yes. We do. Now, last year we did not put up Christmas lights or any holiday lights. Mm -hmm. Boy, because they they are costing us about six thousand a year to repair oh, those in order to be put up terrible. so we're not now no. there is discussion that we may ask bruce as an administrative thing to have those done with the individual lights and fixed and used like on the complex here in city hall and up at the park and some other places if we can if we can fix those and if you know reasonably the cost for these lights? 20000 It's for 88 lights. They will be bigger than what we've got. They're four foot. We've got three foot. Ours were bought from Gatlinburg used a long 10 time years ago. ago. Mm -hmm. it's been a while Was ago. it 15? Okay, I knew it's been sure. a long, long time ago. One of the good things about these new ones is they're individual bowls. One of the problems we had with the others, it was those string lights, and you had to cut out whole portions of them. That's why it was more expensive to repair. We can just replace they individual bulbs on these, so it'll be a whole lot better in the future. And we need a nice place to put them. <laughs> we need them bay. On the roof. <laughs> I, I just got on the roof. It's just a renewal. That's what it takes. <laughs> existing services. We don't really have okay. Much money. Okay, next. Sign with changeable message board. <laughs> Is that in here? I don't know if, did, I think the picture was attached. Um, the sign would say, honoring our past, building our future. I don't think it's and then above it would be the changeable message board. It's page 47 of the packet, the picture. That um, <coughs> there it is. we would have access in-house, Kathy would have access to change this message board remotely. Well, the rock wall that's at the bottom of the picture is not a part of this bin. And this goes where now? Out right out here in front of City out Hall. Front of City Hall. Oh, okay. That way you, you, you can put messages for any events that are going on mm -hmm. at any time. The closings, Old Timers Festival, street closures, um, well, there's just a lot of things we that can just go on and on and on ways to to get people notified of things we've had a lot of success with the billboard oh it's been huge and this is kind of a miniature version of that mm -hmm. because we no longer can have the, the portable mm -hmm. they're tacky and yeah, they are. so okay. any questions All right. Okay, number three is my interstate pole lights. We have some lights down at the interstate. Um, I think we have at least five down. Mm -hmm. This is a bid 
we only had one reply. I normally don't like it when I just have one, but at this point, we need to get these fixed. And I got a back phone call in service. this morning about the issues of coming off that interstate and it being pitch dark there. Well, my so, my base yeah. bid is going to be eighteen one fifty. Mm -hmm. That is if there are no electrical issues when they go to replace these. I've got the pricing down of what it's going to cost if there's any extra. Um, I feel like at this time we need to go ahead and proceed with doing this project and then I will I will put out a bid for maintenance um, for our street lights for the street lights pole lights and for our um, traffic signals and things like that we'll put a bid out to take care of that for maintenance. I think for, Garland's wanting to throw in some info. I was going to say I, you know, we don't get reports on the accidents that <laughs> happen on the interstate that's how the public's got knocked down. All I, I have two tag numbers. That I haven't got run yet to get an address. One's in Kentucky, to get a pay for them too, or two. Yeah. The, the at fault driver's insurance could pay for this if we have the record. Have I'm, a, I'm sure that you really need to get the record. How do you go about getting these records? No, because the, our police department don't. It's don't state. Know the I'm sure the chief knows somebody at state. Well, I've talked to him at length about <laughs> yes, it. Okay. And, and Garland has tried, and I've not had any success yet either. Okay trying to find out because you've got to have the exact date, time, etc. before they can pull it up with the system. Those, if it was our crash reports, it wouldn't be a problem. Right. You could go grab them and they would have them. We've been doing a pretty good job. I was going to say, that's sure been very get. successful on our guardrails. Guardrail signs. Garland does ask for them. Anything else <laughs> in the city property, we've been able to handle it very quickly and get those to them and they could get it done. And have that third party and then we can go back to reimburse it. But with these, the overwhelming majority of the wrecks that occur on the interstate, uh, THP or the county one works on the overwhelming majority is actually THP. Mm -hmm. Every now and then we'll work one, but it, it's not usually one of the more serious. Mm -hmm. It's one that will, they don't have anybody available that's going to take forever to get them there. So to clear the road, get it out of the way, and keep people moving. We take care of it very quickly and we get back over here before we need them in the summers. Wonder what the reason was we just got one bid back. I don't know because I know several were contacted and we were expecting one back from S and W, ah. but unfortunately it's been very hard to get S and W to call us back for a lot of things lately. But fortunately Stansel is the original installer. Mm-hmm. Like and Stanzel's the one, the, the last time we had some down and we put out a bid, S&W and Stanzel both bid, we awarded it to S&W, and they never showed up to do the work. We ended up having to go with Stanzel to get the work done. There are some things we just don't get a lot of response back from. It just depends on what it is. Any more questions? Any more questions? Okay. All right, number four, bid myox feed pump for the water treatment plant. This is one of those I only got one response back from Echo Tech. And of course that's $11,022 for the myox pump. And we are, of course we are in need of that pump so that we can make sure we don't have any water problems. Y'all stop me if you have any questions. Number five, bid, knuckle boom truck for the street department. This, this one we had two different bids back. Um, Stringfellow came back at 98,416 and CMI came back with 102,990. <coughs> uh, of course, Stringfellow, both of them met specs. Uh, I think CMI was above specs, but we would like to award that to, to Stringfellow at this time. And strings from a coming up. What bid? The knuckle boom truck, 98416 okay. This was a budgeted item. All right, number six, state bid, truck for water billing. This is a truck, um, water billing is about in need of more than one truck because we've had to do some repairs just recently on two of their trucks. Uh, but this truck will be a state bid price at 
1683. And it will be a two-wheel drive extended cab truck. It's a Colorado. It's the small size, uh, along the same size as the Ford uh, Rangers. Any questions? Next, we have state bid truck for storm water. You'll look, we have a, <coughs> it's a state contract uh, for a Ford F-250 XL with some additional equipment that needs to be added to that truck. We'll make it 25606. This is a storm water truck. It will come out of the storm water department. Number eight, state bid, salt for city streets. As usual, we usually have salt that we have to reserve a certain amount of salt. Um, and Garland and I just talked about that the other day and he's wanting to reserve 250 tons at $71 a ton and it'll be through Northern Salt. It will be billed out to us as we get it. So if we don't get the whole 250 ton, we're not going to pay for that one. How much, how much salt were you last year? Huh? Very little. Less than five. It was one year, the year before, we used quite a bit, didn't we? Uh, I wouldn't say it was a whole lot, but we needed more than we had. And had availability of absolutely. But y'all feel 250 is going to be enough. Plenty. But, and again, it's just a reserve. It's there if we need it. We got it on hand now. We do. Maybe 175 times. Yeah, that's one thing we're going to have to look at in the future, the new building for that song. Yep. And it's in very bad shape. So yeah. We'll have to look at that maybe next budget year. Yep. All right, number nine, use dump truck for street department. Okay, as you can see, this is a used truck. We do not typically bid a used truck. We get the... Um, blue book value and then the and then the cost of the truck this truck they were asking 36,000 for online um, the uh, blue book is 35 540 and they're willing to give it to us for 29.5 painted white <coughs> instead of the it, I don't know if y'all got the picture but it is a yellow color uh, we would paint it white and that does fall under their budget that they had budgeted 30000 for a used dump truck. This is a diesel truck. And it gets rid of one. We're spending a lot of money on brakes all the time trying to keep it running. Okay. All right. Um, if we can get quickly get this through... Um, the consent agenda of 10, and then I think everybody's needing a little break here. Um, last on our uh, A list for the consent agenda is the projector and screen for the boardroom. Mayor, we, we uh, obtained quotes for a new projector and screen to actually go over here on this wall mm -hmm. and, and where the audience would be able to see it a whole lot easier than cranking around to look at the other one. Uh, we had three quotes. Uh, the low quote that met the specifications we had was from Guardian System Systems for 75, 25, 50. So that's what we would like to, to request approval for. And we've had a lot of requests for the big screen over in here. And it will not do away with the existing one. It just adds another one to the Yeah, room. we can see this, but they can see this one. Right. So, any questions? And we're going to give that to Garth. And I probably can see that one better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, if y'all don't mind, let's take about a 15, 20 minute break and we will resume in 15 to 20 minutes.